Hi, this is Tomas Wolf again. This is part two of the Sumie demonstration. I hope you caught the first one. Um, I only got started with uh, showing you how the brush works. And now I would like to continue by uh, doing a second exercise, bamboo, leaves, and grass. The masters always uh, emulated each other. They looked at each other's work and the Japanese developed a method for drawing leaves. And you don't necessarily have to follow that method, but here's the way they do it. Okay, so now I'm going to draw a bamboo scene, which is sort of a classic uh, Sumie image. So I start by taking out about three swipes of the tone, the gray tone, and I put about three-eighths of an inch of the tip of the brush right into the ink, and I do the oblique, the sideways brush stroke. I start at the bottom, and I do little long swipes. I like the way the ink breaks up right there. That's the kind of effect you're trying to catch. So I go back, I put more of the half tone, and I put more straight ink. And I start here, and here's another bamboo piece that's coming up this way. And then one more. Just, it's usually good to have an odd number. So I'm going to go, this one's going to go slightly, it's going to go this way. Okay. And then there are usually these little sprouts coming off the end here like this, little connectors. And then some leaves. Leaves come are usually straight like this. Some of them go off at an angle. Different layers. Okay. You can see how much fun this is. Maybe a little bunch right here. And I, st I use up a lot of the ink here because the light gray ones actually look like they're in the background. And maybe a few more here. Oop, not enough water. Okay, and finally, I do a little editing. I can put a little ground space in here. And maybe even a few little pieces of grass coming in, and maybe a rock. A little gray, a little Okay, maybe a little bit of a sky effect here. And that's it. That is just my first copy. I keep practicing. Here's one that's a little better, more completed. I can go back later and decide that it needs you know, it needs more leaves. And you can see how the light ones here look like they're in the background and the nice texture on the bamboo. Okay, that's the end of that exercise. Okay, exercise. the next exercise we're gonna do is trees and mountains. 
I love doing trees. There's many possibilities. So first I soak my brush in the half-tone gray. Wipe it down, take off about three wipes. Put about three-eighths of an inch of ink on the brush. And I start doing tree shapes. You notice how I use the ink up completely on each one. I end up getting some thin fading branches in the back. So now I've sort of run out of ink. And so I load it up with the half tone, wipe about three brushes, and put it in the heavy ink. I can do more of a gnarly tree. Getting some nice little texture there. I'm out of ink again. Maybe some little branches coming off of it. Okay. And then there's a lot of small little bushes, little tiny trees can be done quickly like this. Maybe put a little bit of a foreground. Okay, maybe some leaves. Trying to figure out what I'm gonna do here. Leaves can be different shapes. Maybe some grays. Okay, and I can come back and add a little more branches, a little more leaves, heavier leaves. Okay, maybe a little horizon line. Give it some interest, maybe even a faint mountain in the background little grays for the ground. And there's my attempt of making some quick trees. It's really a lot of fun. Okay, and the final thing, mountains. I, I did a slight mountain there, but you can also... By the way, paper has two sides, a rough side and a thin, uh, less rough side. And it's better to do it on the rough side, it absorbs more. Okay. Mountains, the usual method, maybe a little bit more ink. Mountains in front of mountains. You can come back and add some ink Maybe to give it some perspective, you put little trees on this ridge. And maybe some clouds on the side here. Maybe some little trees over here. Further in the distance. All right, and here's, uh, here's an example of three mountains and some trees with the minimum of, of ink used. So have fun with the mountains. Okay, here's some finished artworks that might give you some ideas. This is some flowers with uh, stems. You see how simple it is, four or five blades of grass, two flowers, 
I have the heavy part of the ink on the inside here so that it looks darker inside. But over here I have the ink on the outside for some contrast. This is a wasp on his nest. You can see I used a lot of black lines and then used the grays for the inside. Bird studies. Trees on the riverbank. Very dark trees, but then some moderately light ones in the back to add the contrast. And they usually say there needs to be a balance of the dark with the light. And this one is pretty balanced with the dark. This is the back side of a willow tree. And this one is the back side of a mountain. I really like this one because it's just one, two mountain ridges, maybe a third mountain ridge, very dark, interesting shaped trees, done very quickly. And finally, the back side of two mice under the grass. White space is also very important. Thank you. I appreciate you all being in this workshop. It's been a lot of fun. Go out and get a brush and some ink and have a go at it. Practice every day. Go outside and have a great time, creative time.